Today I'm going to share the story with you of how I came to build this small conference table called a huddle table. A few months ago I got approached by a financial planning office to build a huddle table for their office, to which I naturally said, of course, I would love to build a huddle table, which led me to the first part of this project, figuring out what the hell a huddle table was. After I did some initial research and found out what a huddle table was, I talked with the client to figure out what their needs were and how big they needed it to be. And then I sat down and could actually work on the design. They shared a few things with me that they wanted. They told me they wanted it to seat four to six people and that they wanted it to taper as it went away from the wall. And so after a bunch of back and forth and messing around with the design and SketchUp, here's what I finally came up with. It's kind of a waterfall design style, but it's not a true waterfall table. It has one solid wood leg, and then the other leg is made up of box steel tubing in kind of a trapezoid shape. What's tricky about this build is that I had to ship it all the way to New York. So that means it had to be able to be taken apart and put back together without me being on site, which ended up influencing some of the final design decisions. Based on the time commitment of this project and knowing my schedule and what I had going on, I knew I couldn't tackle this project on my own. So I brought it into the group with the rest of the guys from SoCal Woodshop and we decided we'd build this project as a group. See that guy doing the talking there? That's Josh. This table's built out of solid six quarter cherry. So we went to our local lumber spot and picked out a bunch of boards that were gonna work for us. And it was already in pretty good shape, but it still required some initial milling to get it to where we needed it to be. So we started by laying out all the lumber and getting an idea of how the pieces would kind of flow together, cutting it to rough lengths and milling it down so that we could lay it all out for a glue up. When figuring out which way to lay out the boards, we took into consideration which boards looked best next to each other, the grain direction, and the width of each board. And once we figured out the best way to lay them out, we gave each board a letter so that we knew how to glue it back together. And then it was time to take it over to the jointer and mill the edges so that we could glue it up nice and clean. That tool there is called a jointer and it allows you to make sure that the edges of each board are 90 degrees so that when you go to glue them together, you have nice solid seams and you don't have any weird gaps. Then we could start laying out the dominoes for how we were gonna join the whole tabletop together. The domino helps with alignment and makes the glue up really strong. That's Taylor using the domino there. From there, it took myself, Pete, Taylor, and a whole bunch of clamps to glue up this big tabletop. Having the letters laid out on the boards helped us keep track of what was what and what piece should go where. We did the same thing with the boards that would become the leg, but I'm not gonna bother showing that because it's the same process. Once the glue up was finished, we wiped off all the excess glue and then could just let it dry. From there, Pete and I used a combination of hand planes and a Rotex sander to make sure that the tabletop was nice and flat. Once the tabletop was in good shape, we went back with some black tinted epoxy and filled in any little knots or any imperfections in the top. And then we shifted focus over to the steel leg. I picked up some box tubing from a local metal supply company and then I cut the pieces to shape with my metal chop saw. Unfortunately, I don't have a welder at the moment, so one of the guys in the shop actually took the pieces and had his brother weld it. But I don't have any footage of that, so I guess you'll just have to imagine what that looked like. From there, we could focus on getting the tabletop cut down to its final size and shape. We used a track saw to give the tabletop its nice, clean, tapered shape. One of the perks of having a club like SoCal Woodshop is having the ability to get access to tools that maybe you wouldn't normally have or that are much nicer than ones you currently have. And then we use the router to give it a nice rounded over edge in the corners. This is where we had to make some choices to help with the assembly process knowing that it wasn't gonna ship in one piece. We carved a rabbit, which is this little channel in the underside of the tabletop. That way it would help align where the leg has to go. Then we use the Shaper Origin, which is this handheld CNC router to put a couple things into the tabletop. Number one being the drop-in insert where they can plug in their laptops and all that type of stuff. And number two, we decided to add some C-channel steel into the underside of the tabletop and on the leg to help stiffen up the tabletop and the leg and help prevent it from moving because of the changes in humidity from California to New York. The last thing we wanted was for them to have trouble putting it back together because the wood swelled or moved during shipping. So adding the C-channel steel helped prevent that from happening, and I think it made a really cool accent. So it was one of those scenarios where necessity ended up influencing the final design. If you want to know more information about how the Shaper Origin works, I have another video where I used it to build some kitchen utensils which you can check out. But anyway, we added some threaded inserts to mount the steel to the table so that everything was nice and strong. 
and then I spent a lot of time finish sanding everything to make it really smooth. And before we added the finish, I added our brand to the underside of the tabletop. For some reason, this is about the only shot I have of the finish being added to the tabletop, which means I either lost footage or I forgot to record. Either way, it happens. We added five or six coats of satin armor seal to the table, which really brings out the grain in the cherry and gives it a nice protective finish. I also had all the steel components powder coated black, and I think it adds a really nice contrast with the cherry. And that's the story of how the huddle table came to be. It was a really fun group project, and I know we all learned a lot from it. So lastly, all we did was took it apart, packed it up, and shipped it off to New York, and the client was extremely happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different than some of the videos I've done in the past, but hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please hit the like button, and also leave a comment down below let me know that you liked it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.